Hey guys, Joe here, and as promised by the post that I threw up with those pictures, I have everything set up. I'm ready to film this pickup, so let's go ahead and do that, and then we're going to talk about what I intend to do with some of the stuff that we have here. So, buckle up, it's probably going to be a long one. So I did get a new phone again. This is the Google Pixel 3a XL. It's a 6.2 inch screen. It has a lot of the features of the 3, but a few less, and it was a much cheaper phone. It's a lot of stuff like fingerprint scanner, which is really awesome. So last year, I spent a lot of time finding tech and video games. I found a lot of computer systems. I built a lot of weird ones. I was building like one or two a month. And I stopped that because number one, I stopped driving for that company and I wasn't able to go to the same place as I was. Also, I lost that income. Additionally, sometimes they were too far away, the deal didn't make sense, things like that, so I had to back out. Well, since I moved in here, I really haven't been doing much in the way of hunting. I've picked up a couple of deals here and there, but most of it was when I was in downtown Winchester. Two days ago, or three days ago, I got a text completely out of the blue. It was Friday. I'm gonna have to blur out the number, so Joe, hold the phone steady. Here's the gist of it. A guy that I was going to make a deal with a year ago, we wound up not making the deal. Things didn't go real well. I couldn't get to him, so I did make the deal. Well, he texted me out of the blue and was like, I still have all this stuff. I went away, I came back, and I still have all this stuff. And at the time, parts were worth more. RAM was still high. CPUs were still worth some money because... Intel wasn't dropping a new version of the i7 or i9 every four minutes like they are right now. At the time, we were talking like 150, 200 bucks for everything, and he messaged me, said, hey man, shot in the dark, are you still interested? And I was like, yeah, but not at anywhere near the price that you're asking. And he's like, well, throw me a price. And I said, I don't want to insult you. And he was like, well, I don't want to throw it away. Because that was what he was going to do. And when I met him, he said the same thing again. He said, I don't want to throw this stuff away because I'd like to see it go to somebody. So I drove out to him in Maryland. So it was about a 45 minute drive for me from where I am now. And I picked all the stuff up. I also stopped at a flea market, which is where the bulk of the rest of the picture that's in the thumbnail came from. But let's talk about what I got from this guy first and then we'll go into what I got from the flea market. First thing, kind of a flyby B-roll kind of a shot thing is a i5 2500K on a Biostar Z68 chipset. I do have a Biostar Z75, however that motherboard is dead, so it's nice to get a board that can run the Sandy Bridge processors. This is my personal 650 because I was testing the system and quite frankly it's better than the card I got with it. The RAM is just G-Scale Ripjaws X, which I have like a million of, but it's never a problem to have extra. Those are 4 gig modules and I just have them running in dual channel because I was testing what I got from him, not what I can do. So this was the next one that interested me. It's an MSI A88X1 ACV2 motherboard. It's a micro ATX. As you can see, it's barely bigger than the cooler. And I wanted one of these being for a while because I was going to build a HTPC. Underneath the cooler there is an A107870K which is overclockable. It's already at 3.4, 3.8, or 3.9 or something, and it is overclockable. However, as you can see, yeah, she's really gunked up. I did power it on. I did test both of these systems. They both work bueno, but they uh, need to be seriously cleaned. What I do like about this one is that it did come with a wireless adapter already on the motherboard, as well as a really nice Asus shark fin, which I can use for other wireless cards. After all the time I've been using that, computer monitor and that area over there to test stuff. I've been just leaving crap sitting on this table and I finally decided that you know what I might as well set up one of the monitors and since I have a whole bunch of stuff that I'm going to be showing you that I have to test I might as well set it up to do that. So that's what I did. It's a nice big table, plenty of room. I've worked on a couple of computers already and it should work just fine. Let's get back to what we picked up so that I can show you some of what we're going to be doing over the next week. The next thing I want to show you is something that I kind of forgot about showing. I may have mentioned it before, but my buddy Daniel gave me his old Asus Ultrabook. This is the 15.6 inch Core i3 model. It has a pretty low wattage 
uh, chip in it. However, this is perfect for just when I'm sitting in bed when my legs really bother me for watching YouTube or DC Universe or whatever I'm subscribed to. However, I do need to change the hard drive out. I was running my SSD, but it was my last SSD, so I took the SSD out and I cloned the hard drive onto a 7200 RPM laptop hard drive, which works, but now the system takes, you know, two and a half, three minutes to boot because it's just an i3. I also doubled the RAM from four to eight gigabytes. So it works good once it boots. However, it's booting too slow. So if one of you guys has some extra SSDs you want to donate to the channel, let me know. Hit me up in the comments or send me an email. And that would be awesome because I really like this thing. I got to take these stickers off of it, but it will be a good thing to use at the range when we go shooting because it also has an SD card reader. So I could move the footage directly onto the laptop so I can check it and make sure it's all good. And then once I get home, I could just whatever I need to. If it was an i5 or an i7, I could edit on it and I wouldn't even have to remove it. But it's got a lot of cool stuff. USB 3.0, some 2.0, some HDMI. It's got everything I need and if I go traveling, I'll take it with me because I don't want to invest in a gaming laptop right now. Although if the right one came along, I'd probably say yes. My buddy's pawn shop, he has an ROG, but it only has a 1050 Ti. And it's not good enough for me. I would want at least a 1070 in a laptop if I'm going to buy another gaming laptop now. So the last thing I got from the kid was an HD6870. Yeah, HD6870 Radeon card. However, it doesn't perform very well in 2019 because it doesn't have enough VRAM buffer to it. If I had another 6870, I could run them in Crossfire. This is the old style with the actual Crossfire bridge. And then I could probably get a little more performance because they'd be sharing the load. However, one gigabyte is really difficult to use nowadays. But I intend to do a video on the card to show how it's actually being beat by a 650 non-TI. Plus it uses two six pin peg connectors and it's still slower than a 650. It's kind of sad. This last thing is kind of a behemoth. It's kind of large for what it is. This is just a mid tower. It's not even a full tower. It's actually smaller than the Corsair case I was using for Red Devil for a while. But it will be usable for something. I don't know. Maybe I'll put the 2500K in it because that's what actually came out of this. A couple of drives in the front there and maybe I'll flip it. Or I might use it to build one of the other computers I got. So let's go ahead and take a look at that and you'll be interested in those too. So a couple of weeks ago I went up north to the flea market and I picked up a few things which you saw the VCR and then a couple of games and a couple other things but I passed on something that I kind of wish I hadn't at the time because it meant I had to drive back up there to get it this last weekend which was kind of annoying but in the back of my brain I was like I don't really need this and then by the time I got home I was like yeah you really needed it so without further ado let me just show you what it is and I got these for four dollars not four dollars each four dollars total I know that's eight but you know what I mean starting with probably the best one in the bunch this is a something or other motherboard it's probably a Pentium 4 based on the fact that it has SATA along with IDE but it is AGP now it's filthy and I still have to test it but the other thing I was waiting for was I was waiting to get it home and waiting to make this video before I took the cooler off to see what the heck processor is under here. So I figured we'd do that together. So let's go ahead and do that now. Assuming I can figure out how to get this cooler off. Oh, that wasn't difficult. Okay, it was a little difficult. But as you can see, uh, this thing is really filthy. It's an arrow cool. I'll have to get up to something. Actually, here real quick. It's going to blow dust everywhere, but... I just want to see if the fan even works. It does. All right. As you can see, that uh, cooler is copper. It's very heavy, and the paste is completely junk. So, let's see what we have for our processor, shall we? Pentium 4. I'm trying to see which version it is. It's the one that's rated at 3.2 gigahertz. So we'll have to examine that and see which one it is, but uh, it's exactly what I expected, which is cool because that means I can put some games on here that I haven't played in a long time. 
Uh, you have a lot of discs for older games, and it'd be nice to play some of them. So that's number one. Uh, looking at it, besides the dirt that's all over it and the dust that's all over it, the caps look good. None of them are bulging. None of them appear to be leaking. I'll clean it all up, and this will be part of one video where I test all three of these motherboards at the same time. So that is a massive heat sink, I'm telling you. We're going to take a look at the next one. It's another potentially uh, Pentium 4. It does have a couple of SATAs on there as well, so I'm thinking it's also going to be a Pentium 4. I just got to take this extreme gamer thingy off. It's held on exactly the same way. Ah, LEDs. This thing just got even more awesome. Although I can tell you it's completely blocked. So that works, but again, paste is completely shot. Let's see what processor we have. I've had this bottle for almost a year and a half. It's finally running out. Best $9 I ever spent. Simon says it's probably going to be the exact same processor, but uh, we'll find out in a second. After a word from these sponsors. So it's another Pentium 4, however, this one is rated at 3 gigahertz. So, again, I will do some research before we finish with all of these to make sure I know what I'm talking about when I tell you what they are. Okay, on the motherboard number 3, and this one does have a couple of USBs, however, no SATA connection, so... And the jumpers are all twisted, so I'm holding out the least hope on this one. It also has the most basic cooler of the bunch. And it actually may even be an AMD based on the way the cooler is attached. So, let's go ahead and pull this one off. Ugh, it's one of those horrible ones too that you got to push down. Might even jam through the board. Hate these. Oh well, wish me luck. That wasn't hard. Oh yeah, it's an AMD for sure. Oh wow, this thing has not been touched since it was built from what I can tell. Although this fan is so small and old, I wonder if that works too. Any takers? Bueller? Bueller? Huh, it works. Well, I have no idea which one this is. It's a socket 462, so I'm assuming it's like a 486, possibly a K6 because it does have USB on the back. Uh, give me a second, I'm going to check it real quick. Sorry that it took me so long, but uh, I had to do a little bit of research. This is an Athlon 1400. It's from 2001, and it's socket 462. So that's pretty, uh, pretty damn old, but it'd be interesting to see if it will still work. And this one came with some DDR RAM already installed, which is convenient, so I'm happy there. Again, looking at it, the caps look okay. Nothing appears to be leaking. So what I will do is clean the paste off of anything that has a heat sink and reapply it. Also clean out the fans, give the motherboard a good cleaning, and make sure that everything is where it should be. Now this thing is so old it doesn't even use an additional CPU power adapter, but that's okay. On to some peripherals. And this is another reason why I bought this thing. Number one, bunch of hard drives. I mean, bunch of hard drives. These things range from 40 to 80 gigs and literally a lot of hard drives. So if you want to build an actual classic system, I got hard drives for days. Problem is I don't have any IDE cables readily available. I'll have to get some. Forgot that I did get a Zalman cooler with the 2500K. I've never really cared for these, but uh, whatever, I'll use it. Additionally, the mount might work with a Cooler Master, an older one that I have, so we'll see. Either way, we'll test it. But what I really wanted this $4 box of computers for was these older AMD graphics cards. Some of them are pretty cool. This is an old uh, X1600 Pro AGP 512 megabyte AGP card. AGP is what you need for these old computers if you want to build like an XP gaming system and even older Windows 95 stuff like that uh, AMD Athlon. I probably wouldn't go newer than 95 on that. But I thought it was just cool to pick these up. This one is a 9000 Pro 128 megabyte AGP card. This one is a 9250 
with 256 megs of VRAM. So these are not impressive cards by today's standard, but for the time they were actually usable cards. I take back what I said about the ASUS board being probably better. The chips that are on this one look like they're actually newer and it actually has more connections for USB and audio. It has a game port, which is fine, I guess. And it has three IDE controllers. So this one is probably the one I'm going to go to. However, I don't see the maker on it. It's probably under some of this dust and I'm not going to blow the dust away. The board is an A65, 865PE Infinity Revision 8.1. And I will give it credit because it does have three fan headers and a lot of connectivity. So this may actually be the one that we go with. Additionally, there's another reason why I wanted these computers. And that's because I've had something sitting around for years, a couple of years now. And I want to test the damn thing. So let me grab it real quick. And that's this. This is a new in-box ATI Radeon. 9800 Pro. I've had this in the box since I bought it at a flea market, which you can check out in this video here, and I unboxed it to see what it was, and for its time it was one of the fastest cards. Now, the thing is, I could sell it and make plenty of money on it because it's a brand new, in the box, never used AGP graphics card. In fact, these cards right now boxed and in tested condition are selling between 50 and 90 dollars and i'm not looking at asking prices i'm looking at sold prices the most recent one was 419 this exact card in the box 76 dollars 110 dollars if i'd left it sealed but yeah this is between a 50 and 80 dollar card right now so more than likely i'm going to test it and then i'm going to sell it because it's still in the box it's almost brand new but i got to make sure it works because it's very old but I can't imagine why it wouldn't work. So that's it for the pickups. I know this was a long video. I warned you at the beginning. If you like what you saw, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to leave in the comments what you think or what you would do, or if you have some SSDs you're willing to donate to the channel. My finger still hurts. I will be making some videos out of all the stuff I picked up. Obviously the 2500K will probably be the best system out of the bunch. Not probably, it definitely will be. I've had one before. Again, I've done some testing with it to make sure it works, and I just put a mild 4.4 overclock on it, and it actually walks all over a newer 3470. So I'm happy there. We'll be doing testing on that. We're going to be doing testing on the AMD 7870K, and then we're going to move on to some of these as well. But leave it in the comments. Let me know which one you want to see first, the 2500K, the AMD, or one of the Pentium 4s. Whichever one you like the most is what we'll probably wind up doing. And yeah, we'll just have some fun. Obviously, I need to do some cleaning, so that will probably be part of whatever episode each individual item appears in. But that gives me a lot of stuff to do over the next week. And that's good since I'm healing right now and I can't be walking around. Also, I will be doing a comparison of the 6870 versus a 650 non-TI. So, yeah, that's about it. Again, don't forget to get subscribed. If you aren't subscribed, it's somewhere. It's somewhere in this wild world. And as always, I'll talk to you later.